Attention wrestling fans, you're in the blast zone for the only podcast where we blow kayfabe wide open and let you know what it really takes to become a professional wrestler. Presented by America's Academy of Professional Wrestling, this is the Buckle Bomb, and you're about to get blown up. Welcome back, wrestling fans. I am your host, Buck Bomber, and this is the Buckle Bomb, the only podcast where we blow kayfabe wide open. Presented by America's Academy of Professional Wrestling, this is the Buckle Bomb. And I have a big Buckle Bomb announcement to make. Uh, we're joined again by uh, the Buckle Bomb champion, Michael Arrow, and um, he has been on so many times that uh, I would like to officially announce that he is the. New Buckle Bomb co-host. Now, don't don't pretend, Buck Bomber, that people haven't been asking and requesting the best guest on Buckle Bomb. So here I am. I don't care that I said the show wrong. You're welcome. <laughs> You're off to a great start. And and now let's be honest. It was Danny O'Ryan. <laughs> Danny O'Ryan's the only one who's like, I really like when. Uh, I don't know who that is. Danny Ryan? I don't know who that is. And it's not just Danny. We've been getting messages from everybody. Your email's been blowing we up. We haven't. Phones are off the hook talking about Michael Arrow and our new challenger of a guest waiting for you to announce him still, actually. I am. I, I don't know why you're lying because this is the podcast where we blow kayfabe wide open and you're just talking a bunch of bullshit. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. But speaking of talking, you are on the Buckle Bomb podcast Edmund Thornton Chen. Hello. I'm so happy to finally be here. And what an opening to that. I have a very good idea of what I'm in for uh, tonight. All right. All right. All right. So how's wrestling? Oh, man. Wrestling's been a lot of fun. Uh, I've been training for like almost six months now, which is kind of crazy to think about. And... um, Oh, yeah, we talked about how, how short you've been training on the last episode. Really? Yeah, we were talking about Golden Boys. We're like, ah, every class just has that Don't one guy. Don't tell him that. <laughs> Don't tell him that. You're blow well, no, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a double-edged sword. We always just go, look at this f- <laughs> Golden Boy. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, man, it's been so much fun. I've really been enjoying it. And it, it it's a little challenging to kind of balance this with school because I actually am in school. But... Overall, it's it's been a lot of fun. This is like a dream come true for me. Maybe you get that a lot, but it really is something I've sort of wanted to do ever since I was a kid. All right, all right, that's cool. I remember, I remember the day you first walked in. I was, I was messing around with a bunch of wires. Just like that was like right when I started being like the head of APW production. Um, so I was looking through a big mess of wires to see what kind of wires we had, and then this guy comes walking in, and like. It's always that awkward thing when somebody walks in. It's like, does this guy know where he's at? Or like, and I was like, hey man, what's up? And what 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 did you say? You were like, well, hey, I'm here to see Papa Don. Yeah, I, I, I was like, hey, is the uh, is the show today? Because I when I first showed at the APW, I got the dates wrong. I thought the shows were on Fridays, so I came expecting to see a wrestling show. Didn't you show up on a Monday? No, I showed up on a Friday. I came later on a Monday, so I. The, the day the sequence of events and I don't mean to sidetrack whatever topic we have but like I I showed up on a Friday thinking there was oh clearly you've never listened to an episode <laughs> of the Buckle Bomb <laughs> but like I, I showed up on a Friday thinking that's when the the actual show was and I ended up just kind of staying for like a tour I I came to the show on Saturday and then on Monday I I I'm, I think I either that was the visit I did before I signed or that was the visit where I did actually sign and I believe I did meet you on Monday and we we had a conversation by the production area right 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 cool 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 so you liking it so far oh my goodness yes um you know pro wrestling is very hard right it's a very challenging thing um and maybe something that people don't realize is that there is no secret like secret that makes it not hurt, right? It, it's tough and it's grueling, but honestly, I I really enjoy it despite how challenging it is. It's, it's one of those things where I'm not only in it for the end result, I'm in it because I enjoy the journey. So may I ask, um, were you like doing sports at all beforehand? Were you just diving into wrestling out of nowhere? Did you have like any sort of back athletic background? I, I do have an athletic background. It's not super impressive. I, in high school, I did baseball, but I wasn't good. So I got cut and I was allowed to stay as the manager. And then the rest of the time I spent in high school was during track. So 
that's running, right? So my conditioning is great, but I was never really like a strong big boy, right? Anyone who sees me in the ring will tell you that as well. That's very much uh, my background also. I uh, was a cross country runner in high school and also played lacrosse, but no one cares about that. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I always uh, wonder about that. What are you talking about? We let you talk about lacrosse for a good 10 <laughs> minutes um, on the episode that I just uploaded yesterday. But Whoa. no one else cares except for me, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> I actually know a lot of lacrosse players, right? It feels like yeah. a very intensive sport. It feels very it's, physical. Yeah, um, it is physical and sometimes it isn't. It's funny. They always change the rules. But yeah, there's there's body checks. You can hit your, the person with your stick uh, as long as they have the ball. Mm -hmm. um, it can get pretty brutal. Um, I loved it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm gonna avoid talking about lacrosse more and talk about um, when did you discover wrestling? You said you were a kid. Were you a big fan as a kid? You know, actually, that's the funny thing. Um, my first introduction to wrestling, uh, I watched it for a birthday party. And honestly, up until that point, I'd never seen a wrestling show. I I, re I watched WrestleMania, and I don't remember which number, but it was the one where uh, uh, CM Punk faced The Undertaker. Okay. Um, so I don't remember what number it was, but that was my first ever foray into pro wrestling. And I didn't really get into watching it until high school when I started watching NXT Black and Gold was how I really got passionate into it, or at the very least got really invested in that specific brand of wrestling. Uh, I think uh, it was TakeOver New Orleans is when I was my kind of first ever NXT pay-per-view. You know, I was a big fan. Uh, I guess I, I am a bit older than you. So I was a big fan when I was like five. It was still like the Attitude Era, and then I broke away and came back. And I would say NXT Black and, Bold, Black and Gold, if I can speak correctly today, <laughs> That's one of the things that really kind of drew me in, too. And that was kind of right before I discovered the indie scene and really discovered that's what they were trying to emulate. But um, the aesthetic, the uh, small space, the intimate crowd, um, that, that was really different. And I guess you could say it's old school, but it's so old that it's new again. <laughs> so one thing I want to bring up, you know, elephant in the room here, because it's, it's an important part of your journey Edmund, did you know you're Asian? Yes. Edmund Thornton Chen is, in fact, an Asian person. You can tell because my last name happens to be Chen. And did you know you were the first Asian guy to train at AAPW in over five years? That's, uh... Man. Hey, 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 I see I see you, Mike. No, dude, this is important. This is important. We, we, we mentioned the importance of, like, culture here on Buckle Bomb, okay? All right, and I th I think it's important that there's an Asian American who's trying to come up now. Cause name one Asian American wrestler. We actually uh, I could name a lot. Okay, okay. <laughs> name one who's on television. Okada. Uh, Is he Asian Naito. American? Oh no, Asian American. Yeah, Asian American. I'm sorry, I'm Asian sorry. American. I'm racist. I, I was I was like. Okay. I was like, Okada's Asian American. Wow, I, I never knew. I was about to say. I, 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 I oh, were you going to say, oh, Kyrie Sane, <laughs> Shinsuke Nakamura? No, I, I understand because I, we, we actually had this conversation, I think, when I first pulled We up did, we did. Because I was pretty hyped on it. I yeah. was like, I was like, oh, man. I apologize. I was just trying to say it doesn't matter that everyone is just chasing their goals. But sure. that, that's cool, too. If you, if, I apologize. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. I am. No, it's it's it's, it's a t uh, Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Oh, well, I, was, I, was, I am very proud of my Asian American heritage, right? I am not ashamed of it at all. And I'm not saying there is any reason you should be ashamed of being Asian American. Um, but, yes, I, I got that impression that, you know, you probably don't see a lot of Asian American trainees. You know, I've, I've been here for almost six months and I think I am the only, I think I've only ever seen one other Asian American step into uh, AAPW. And that would be Shimbashi? I don't even think he's, a, he's Asian Canadian, isn't he? Well, Canada is part of the Americas. We will, we will say Asian Canadian, but like, yeah, I think there's a, I'm very proud of my Asian American heritage and I would definitely love to see more Asian American wrestlers, I do think, you know, having more diversity in wrestling is always a great thing, right? It's always a great thing. Diversity of styles, diversities in uh, cultures and everything, right? Because, like, we don't really think about this uh, very much, but it's like pro wrestling was kind of a white uh, white man's game for a long time. Um, you know, and then there was, you know, Lucha Libre being a big part of, like, Hispanic culture. And it's like, okay. But, like, and we talked about this a few episodes ago um, on – on one of the best episodes of Buckle Bomb, um, that kind of, kind of like it, like, like 
the black community has like just now like started hitting their stride in professional wrestling. Well, I mean, I would say you did have stars that broke the color barrier back then. You well, yeah, say. yeah. Um, and I was going to credit wrestling that it was inclusive to an extent, but um, taking this in, I I just want to apologize again. This is I, I was just blowing it off, and uh, it it is important. It is cool that you're proud of your heritage, and that that is my whole gimmick too. So I'm just a hypocrite. So. No nah, worries, you're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> nah, nah. When I when I bring up the subject, everyone's like, oh, "Where's Buck Palmer going?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, part of the problem is everyone th- like when people see me, when people see me, they go, "That guy could be racist." You know, I'm a I'm a bald white guy with a beard. You know, I drive a truck sometimes, and I wear a wear a wear a cap when I do. You know, mm-hmm. um, but um. Nah, nah, man. It's it's important to me when I see this stuff going on that I'm like, let's go, bro. Let's go. Everybody get some. No, absolutely. I think it's a very exciting thing. So speaking of everybody getting some, uh oh. <laughs> um, do you guys like getting presents on Christmas? Absolutely. Do you guys like the holidays? Yes. Love them. Well, that's this week's topic: the holidays and professional wrestling. Because I couldn't think of a more relevant topic. <laughs> well. I don't know if you knew this, but did you know that Thanksgiving time and Christmas used to be very significant in wrestling? A lot of 80s territories would have big, uh, I believe Starcade was on Thanksgiving Day, and it was a big Super Bowl, WrestleMania type event they would have every Thanksgiving. Uh, I believe in Dallas, a world-class territory they would have, it was funny, it was called Star Wars. I don't know why, but they had, a sh- I think it was a Christmas time show every year they would have. Star Wars, um, and it was a big show that drew all the time. So, I know that's not what you meant to go. <laughs> no, no, it's cool. That's it's what cool. I. That's what I think of, and that's what I really wish that we had. I mean, we have Survivor Series, which, if you watch the old ones in the '80s, it was a lot more Thanksgiving based. Um, and I think I think maybe that's something we can bring back. Just a big, you know, football is huge on on Thanksgiving. Let's, mm. let's bring wrestling back. Well, I was thinking more like. You know, especially here at AAPW and kind of in the Texas Indies in general, just like November and December, like everything just kind of shuts down, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, AAPW recently just had a, a like a week break for Thanksgiving, right, where people can go home and eat like, you know, Thanksgiving dinner. I went home, you know, because that's when school gives me my break. And I come back and apparently that's when AAPW is running like the skeleton crew, right? That's when classes become optional you know and still everybody showed up like i remember um oh except you yeah i was gone i i, I remember in the ring is like who's going home for thanksgiving i was the only one that raised my hand and i was like no way am i really the only one right sounds like someone's not hungry enough oh, god i was hungry for turkey you know chen um there's an old saying um hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard oh man come on man i've been working pretty hard i think I've earned a few days, maybe. Nah. No. You get there, arrow. Uh, I'm still trying to burn off that turkey. It has. It's still there. For Thanksgiving. <laughs> I still have some in my fridge. Wow! Throw it out, bro. <laughs> Thanksgiving was like two weeks ago, right? <laughs> it's just Thanksgiving, kind of as 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 at the point I am in my life, like holidays just kind of come and go for me. I'm just sure. like, I'm just like, uh, okay. I, just, I, I guess stores are closed today. All right. That does kind of feel like the trend as you get older, right? Yeah, dude. It's so weird. Um, remember when Halloween used to be a big deal? Oh, my goodness. I, I kind of miss the fact that I don't celebrate Halloween the same way I used to. But it's, like, hard because it's, like, the only holiday that doesn't get, like, a day off or anything, right? And right. Reasonably so. But, like, how, like, if a college kid or, like, an adult wanted to celebrate Halloween, not saying you can't, it's hard because... Well, well, you're gonna have to find the time. You so cel- yeah, that's true. And I was gonna say also, you celebrate it differently. I mean, maybe you could get away with trick or treating still as an adult, maybe. But you, you're passing out candy. Uh, oh, if you're the fair. party house here, um, there was. I I wish I had participated in Halloween this year. I did not. I was just lame and was just at home playing games i guess but uh my dad told me he, there's there's the party house on the block everyone knows and he's like they were giving out jello shots and <laughs> da, 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 da. so there, there's still a way to uh to party but you know do it safely man i just i remember when i was a kid like halloween was always like this whimsical magical time and then you know when i was in my 20s um 
I was like, hell yeah, time to get f***ed up. All these girls, let's go, dude. Anything can happen on Halloween, bro. Let's go. Um, but uh, now I'm just like, okay, I'm, I just have to like turn off all my lights and hope nobody comes and knocks on the door. Especially Halloween. The first time I got my own apartment, I was really bummed that we didn't get a single trick-or-treater. Maybe we left the light off. That, that might have been dumb, but bummer. Major bummer. So, yeah, everyone... Young, old, go trick-or-treat next year. Go hard. <laughs> I remember I was here this Halloween, actually. That's what I was doing. I think we recorded an episode, and I went, ooh, spooky. But I remember, I, all I remember was I, was I was backing out of my driveway, and I'm like, why are there so many goddamn kids? I'm not trying to run over one. That one's dressed like a ninja. <laughs> there was one. Uh-huh. There was one. Also, he was like six feet tall, so I'm like, I don't think. I think you might be too old to trick or treat there, pal. Uh, some high schoolers and even some middle schoolers are built different, man. Like these days, like. In a girl spurt. Yeah. Dude, I trick or treated like twice when I was still in middle school. Um, and like everybody was just like, Isn't you a little old for this? And I'm like, ah. Shut up. Dude, I remember because I went one year and then I was just like, Okay, I- I'm done. I'm too old for this. And then like, like eighth grade, my friend was like, Hey, come on, man, let's go. And I'm like, Bro, we we are grown men. We are like fourteen. <laughs> <In> eighth grade. <laughs> I think I went around that age, and it was like the same deal. My friend was like, "Hey, let's go." And we're like, "Okay." And it was getting kind of late, but we still like got candy. Like most people didn't say anything except for the last house. The woman opened the door, looked at us, <laughs> and she screamed, "Teenagers!" I mean, she gave us candy, but <laughs> she was still like making uh. fun of us, basically. God, and I remember my friend was wearing like a like a pig costume that was like, I think it was made for somebody about half his size. So oh my god, it was it was very funny. I was gonna mention earlier that I was a ninja for like three years in a row. Oh, who wasn't a ninja when they were a kid? <laughs> I was definitely a ninja at one point. I also liked knights. I was like a huge knight guy. I don't think I was ever a knight. I was Darth Maul, and I was too scared to wear the mask. Really? Of the, you were scared of the mask? I, like, put it on, looked in the mirror, and I was, I don't remember. How, when did that movie come out? I was, like, six. It was, like, um, 01, right? I'm going to say I, 01 because I think that's right. Um, I was born in 01. I was, like, five or six, and I had the Darth Maul mask, and I was crying. I was like, too scared God. to wear it. <laughs> I wasn't even going to see it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You're just a guy in black robes and a double lightsaber <laughs> now. It's like, okay, I get the idea. <laughs> Do you have any um, favorite, uh, I guess I was going to say Halloween because that's more relevant with, with wrestling, any theme shows like that? You Have you seen shows like that? Oh, I guess they did bring back like Halloween Havoc, but did. I did like seeing the old WCW ones. Um, Do you watch like old wrestling? Do you just keep up with the modern stuff? Um. I, I think I started watching a little more old wrestling when I started actually training for it because I wanted to see matches where I could learn from. Um, and it's only just stuff on YouTube. Somebody cool. told you to start watching old matches, didn't they? Not really. Who was it? I, Who was it? I, I got to say not really, but then that's what you hear. Like I, It is funny you hear that a lot. It's like, watch wrestling. Not just the new stuff, the old stuff. But like, there is a lot to learn from the old stuff. I think Danny Orion, I was sick for a week. Couldn't go to practice. I was upset. Danny Ryan sent me some matches to watch, and some of them were some kind of old matches. I think the one I, the ones I watched, one of them was pretty new, and then the other one was uh, Chris Jericho versus Chris Benoit versus Stone Cold versus and Triple H, who were the tag team champions at the time. Was that when Triple H like tore his quad? I don't, I don't know. I don't recall him doing it during the match, but you know, I. Mm, maybe I should have watched it. Was it was definitely closer. during the match, and you might not have known because he works the whole thing through the injury. Oh, was there? Did he it. give him a pile driver through the announcer's table? There was table spots. I, was, I yeah. think that was it. Yeah, man. Um, but yeah, oh, I know we're getting off topic, but I was going to say, if you're uh, especially like training, you should watch the modern stuff, which is something I lack, and I need to watch more of the modern stuff, especially if that's what I'm trying to do. But also watch the old stuff uh, to see things how they used to do it, see things you don't see before, and watch stuff from Mexico, watch stuff from Japan, mm-hmm. watch uh, the world of sport in, in Europe, England. Um, that's great technical stuff. Everyone has a different flavor, and um, you can take things that people don't do here. That's what makes you stand out. 
Um, and if you're just really a wrestling fan, I mean, you're going to... I love seeing wrestling in different contexts. I mean, especially since I grew up with WWE, I, you get used to the set. You know what the set is every week. You forget that they're in a different city. But I like watching Lucha Underground and seeing a completely different setup and seeing different setups like that. I'm rambling. But, <laughs> yeah, everyone watch wrestling. It's nah, you're good. You, get, you know what I really learned from... Or what I learned a few things that I can specifically think of, 1950s little people wrestling. Dude, you learn from everything. Um, Fuzzy Cupid. I've I watched Fuzzy Cupid and I just I learned things from him. Like like um haven't done a hammerlock in forever, but uh he did this thing where he uh took a guy into a hammerlock and he took his free hand, reached around and started choking him, and I'm just like that's great. I'm taking that. I'm like, damn, Fuzzy Cupid, you on you on that next level, man. I wish I remember their names. There's this great YouTube channels like Chicago City Archives or whatever. That's what I watched yeah. it on. That's what I watched it's it on. It's all like 1950s Chicago wrestling, and it's fantastic. Um, it anyway, is. It is great. I stole something from a women's match, and I feel bad that I don't remember their names. Um, they they did this crazy roll thing. I did a few matches, but it's hard to if if you don't go with the right person then they don't know the motion so it's <laughs> not going to work but it's you know you find old things that you can make new again right um God, you know what i love most about that um the announcer because he's such like an old timey announcer guy and then every once in a while he'll say something that's just like "Ooh, you can't say that anymore pal different times, right. different times. Yeah. Uh, different times but that's still with everything dude i love watching ecw but honestly when i go watch it i'm like oh half of this is awful <laughs> it's just terrible uh it just does not hold up well and like you said you cannot say or do the half the things they they did yep but that's why it's a time capsule like you should go watch it see it for what it was and maybe you can learn something or hopefully you enjoyed it <laughs> oh, absolutely <laughs> absolutely um <laughs> pro wrestling pro it's wrestling. got a, it's got a very sordid history <laughs> i love it yeah and i love it in the history of of it all around the world and i think it's amazing that it came from america you know it it spawned at least in the working sense uh post civil war um I'm rambling again, but yeah, yeah but then no, in go Japan, ahead. in Japan, it's 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 different too. And in Mexico, um, it was basically born in El Paso, and I forget what uh, man, the founder of CMLL, which is actually the oldest wrestling company in the world, it is over a hundred years old now. Oh my um, god! It was originally called EMLL, but then they changed it in like the '90s, I think. But um, yeah, I like watching all kinds of different flavors. Absolutely. Um, when you were saying Halloween shows, I couldn't help but I'm like, my go-to for Halloween shows is AAPW's Halloween Horror Show. Yeah. Um, you know the- it's such a fun, like, okay, okay. It's because I've been a part of it year after year, and it's always fun. Everybody has a good time. I can't think of too many matches that have been, like, huge stinkers. And as soon as I said that, I immediately thought of one that was not great. Whoops. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that those shows have always kind of been a big deal for me. Um, my, my first Halloween Hardcore show was a big lesson for me. And uh, Jose Valiente, I hope he comes back. I'd love to wrestle him again. Um, but I learned a lot from him. And it was great because it, it all started. I didn't even know it was going to happen. My hair is long again. <laughs> but my hair was longer before when I first started. It was like oh, almost, wow. It was almost to my butt. And I got tired of it, and it's hot. I think I'm almost to that point again. But I went up to Pops, and I was like, I want a haircut. <laughs> and he said, all right, I'll book it for, for Halloween. And then I did a program with uh, with Jose. Uh, that's uh, Manny's son, if you don't know. Uh, oh. Manny, yes, sir. Uh, stepson. Oh, stepson. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Former stepson. Former stepson. Whatever. It's yeah. Um, I've always wondered what that must be like. I'm like. Dude, they're, they're still tight. Yeah, no, they 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 they, 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 they look like they're pretty cool, but I'm so, just like, I wonder what it's like, though, like having somebody kind of be your son and then suddenly they're not. Well, it's, to me, that's a song. We should ask Manny, but... um. Anyway. Have you, guys, have you guys gotten those weird messages from Manny's Instagram? Yes, I blocked it. It's not Manny. I have also blocked it. He uh, Does he know his Instagram's been taken? Yes, he put it on Facebook. He said my Instagram got hacked. Oh, okay. So I worked a feud... <laughs> with Jose Beliente <laughs> that taught me a lot 
Um, I did a few matches with him and then uh, with Manny also. And then the big blow off was Halloween Hardcore. It was funny because it was him coming back from retirement, but it was billed as uh, retirement versus hair. Mm. If I win, he retires. He wins. He cuts my hair. So I don't really remember how the match went. <laughs> <laughs> I remember there's one part where he like tossed you out over the top ropes and you landed on your feet on the outside. And it looked so gnarly that I was just like, that was like a mistake. It wasn't a mistake, but it was so gnarly that I was like, there's no way that was on purpose. You know what was really cool is it It was. And right. he asked me and I, I said it was okay and I thought it went fine. And every other time I try to propose it, no one wants to do it. <laughs> it's pretty gnarly, dude. I'm like, I'm like, it's fine. They're like, I don't know, man. Oh, man. But I'm okay. I'm sorry. Um, so we have the match. Um, he goes over. And it, this was, you know, it was very early in my career. My career is still very young. But I think it was still one of my favorite moments being sat down in the ring. Papa Don is, he's got his shavers shaving my head. <laughs> Jose is on the phone, on the phone, on the microphone. You know, a kind of phone. And there was like, you know, I think we have a pretty big crowd for Halloween. And that might have been our biggest one then. I think it was like 200 people we had. Oh, my goodness. To. It was a lot of people. And they all wanted to kill Jose Valiente. Wow. It was amazing. Like, he splashed water on my face. I think I have the cry breathing pretty down. The... <laughs> so everyone thought I was crying. He uh, was talking uh. so much crap to the crowd. And everyone was just yelling and wanted to get him. And it was like one of the most tense feelings I've... It was definitely the most tense feeling I felt here at APW inside the ring. And that's just... That's what you... That's magic. That's amazing that you guys were able to create like such a strong reaction in the audience. I think, I think anyone would kill to get their audience to react as strongly as that. Yeah, man. So... We talked about Halloween. How about Thanksgiving? You guys ever remember anything about like wrestling and Thanksgiving? Uh, How about that giant egg? Oh, that's 1990 right. WWF. Do you Sorry. know who came out of that egg? I know. Excuse me. Do you know who was uh, the gobbledygooker? Do you know who was inside? You know who the gobbledygooker was? Is what I'm trying to ask. Oh, I'm thinking of someone else. My oh, dad. you know, I brought up. I brought up the giant egg. Wait, what egg were you thinking about? I was thinking of I was thinking of a different person altogether. Not an egg, just like someone. Do you who, know about the gobbledygooker? I know he doesn't of, watch old I stuff. I know we, of we the talk. gobbledygooker. I know I don't know who's. Well, in you it. can. There's a lot of old stuff to watch. I'm you a know, very it's young established. Person. He said that he watches some old matches. He doesn't. I really definitely don't watch, watch the storylines. Is the, the, the so specific okay? Point. There was a giant egg, and it was 1990, and it was the same year that Undertaker debuted. So Undertaker didn't know what he was going to be. He saw them advertising an egg on TV. He said, oh, my God, I'm going to come out of an egg. My career is over. <laughs> Thank goodness that wasn't the case. But you know who was in the egg? The gobbledygooker. Do you know who the gobbledygooker was? Tell us. Hector Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero's brother. Oh and if God. you don't know who that is, brother, he looks just like Eddie. And Wait, wait, wait. wait. Argue... Hold up, hold up, hold on. You saying the gobbledygooker isn't real? <laughs> my God. I've been lied to. Okay, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing about that. They played off the gobbledygooker like it was a real thing. But, like, last time I saw the gobbledygooker, um, like, they, they demasked him. And I'm like, are they are they just, like, are they, are they just saying he's not at work anymore? Is that more recent? Yeah. Um, I mean. Oh, my God. There's a man inside the gobbledygooker. It was, it was probably, like, two years ago. It was the New Day. They were screwing around being like. Oh. Yeah, Thanksgiving with a new day. And they're like, oh, here comes the goggly goop, the, the, the gobbledy gooper, um, the well, gobbagool. That's just them recognizing it's a meme, and I'm happy they did that. <laughs> well, you know, some people like me respect the kayfabe of the gobbledy gooker. What is the whole point of this podcast? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I'm very confused. We're talking about pro wrestling in the holidays. <laughs> what is the First thing you said. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, yeah. We blow kayfabe out the door. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm hearing. I'm talking about. Messages. I'm talking about the WWE and what they do with the gobbledygooker. And I would like to see the 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 dignity of the gobbledygooker maintained. We blow kayfabe except for the gobbledygooker. No, we we do, we blow up our own kayfabe. Okay. I'm talking about what they did to the gobbledygooker. We can talk about how the gobbledygooker isn't real all we want. 
I'm just saying I don't like that they show that the gobbledygooker is not real. No that he's a guy no in a suit. No respect for their own character. Yeah, no respect for their own gimmicks. <laughs> Terrible. I feel the same way about Hector Guerrero. They shouldn't have put it on him. They should just put Hector Guerrero out there. <laughs> well, they wanted they wanted a they wanted a big turkey. Like well, who, it didn't work. Who else are they gonna put? <laughs> you know, if they had tried, if so... they had tried a little more. Because, because you know, it, it, it's my catchphrase by now. But I love pro wrestling the most when it is stupid, and there's nothing stupider than a <laughs> giant egg that hatches with a giant damn turkey coming out. I do think, I do think, silly wrestling absolutely has its place. I, I actually, <laughs> I, I, I do enjoy my fair share of silly wrestling. But, it, but for me, it's got to be this perfect balance of when it's stupid, but they don't want to acknowledge that it's stupid. How stupid it is. You know, when, when people go, oh, hee, 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 this is so funny. Uh, that's like, I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm like weirdly picky with it. I've definitely watched and enjoyed some comedy matches. But there are other matches like me versus or so-and-so versus the Invisible Man. I'm like, ah, I'm not, whatever. But so, some of it's not my cup of tea. But I'm trying to think of their, okay, so the Johnny Knoxville WrestleMania match. Did you see that this year? With I, I didn't. Great comedy match. Okay. Did you see that? I did not. Uh, it was it was uh, Sami Zayn, who Sammy everyone Zayn knows. He's a great worker. I've Absolutely. been saying it for a long time. Um, him in Knoxville was just go watch it. It's a great comedy match. Um, I'm I'm trying to think of another example, but there's there's some good and bad. I think that goes with everything. I am a big hardcore wrestling fan. I'm not a big deathmatch wrestling fan. Um, I like some death matches, but sometimes it's too much. Sometimes it loses the context. Same with comedy. If it loses the context of it, if if I feel like I'm just watching something that's just dumb, I'm not going to watch it. Sure. But I don't know. Well, how do you feel about that? <laughs> I can't even, I can't. Can't even get it. The out. time the four horsemen <laughs> locked Sting up in a cage. And then Robocop came out and saved him. Dude, dude, did you? I saw that clip. That's what I'm talking about. I love, I love that kind of thing. Do you know Rick Steiner? Yeah. Yeah. Did you see the, (laughs) he had a confrontation with Chucky on uh, WCW. I think it was Nitro. He was cutting a promo Um, and Chucky, Chucky like comes on the, uh, the hard cam. And it was basically like a promotion, but I'm pretty sure the audio was off. So they were like talking over each other, or it was just awful. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whoops. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I I know that that happened. I'm not a big fan of watching it. And I they they had him. They had Chucky on um, again more recently, didn't they? On a, oh, with WWE, I think they did a lot yeah. of stuff between Liv Morgan and Chucky. I want to say. Yeah, I was just like, no, 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 no. Because like I'm just like, ee, 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 is it ee. making you cringe? I'm just kind of a little scared of Chucky. Oh, I see. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I think that's very reasonable. I'm not very good when it comes to horror either. I mean, most horror I'm good with, um, but uh, but I have uh, I have pediophobia. Oh, yeah. Um, which was great because I had a grandma who loved collecting dolls and everything. <laughs> Yikes! Loved my grandparents. Hated staying at their place because just all the dolls, every single room. When we're on the, while we're on the subject, sorry, I wanted to talk about this earlier and then we kind of moved on and I was like, oops, missed my moment. But since we're back on the topic of like horror Halloween based stuff, my, my first holiday show was in fact Halloween Havoc, um, which was my trip, uh, not triple threat, which was my two out of three falls with. You mean the Halloween horror show? Yeah, Halloween horror show. You know, the Halloween show Havoc. that nobody can get the name right of. Um, <laughs> Is it this one? Dude, it was Halloween hardcore before. <laughs> <laughs> I got what you, I got he said, "You mean this one? Like, <laughs> like, how you didn't get the name right?" But it was called Halloween Hardcore before. Halloween N- Hardcore. No, 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 no. no. I, he, I'm confused. He's okay. making a joke about how you said the name of the buckle bomb wrong. Oh, yeah. And I'm over here. Yeah. Yeah. You're over here, the new, the new host. You're like, I'm the new co-host on Bucker Bomb. <laughs> but what I'm gonna say is that was not only one of the best matches I ever had. Houston Hendricks is a great worker. I love working with that guy. But it was also probably the biggest, one of the biggest audiences I've ever uh, performed in front of. And so that match went so well. I, I felt so good about that match. And it, it honestly is probably going to be anytime Halloween comes around and maybe the Halloween, uh, what do we call it? Halloween Horror Show? Yes. The Halloween Horror Show comes around again. I'm going to be like, oh, my one of my 
best match which was on a Halloween show. Trying, yeah, so that that's what I wanted to say, and I'm sorry to kind of bring it back there after we try to move away from it. Sorry, let's move on to Christmas. Yeah, Christmas. How about wrestling and Christmas, you guys? Yeehaw. Remember that time just anything happened with Santa Claus? Dude, I remember, I, so I grew up with like 2000 Smackdown, and every mm-hmm. once in a while I'll, I'll go back and watch it. Um, I remember, didn't someone beat up Santa Claus? Didn't he get hit by a car one time? <laughs> My God. <laughs> and it like came back to me that I forgot. Um, I want to say like the Undertaker, or maybe it was a heel. Someone like, was it Mr. Kennedy? Someone beat up Santa Claus. <laughs> I'm pretty sure somebody hit Santa Claus with their car. I'm going to I'm gonna look that up. The only sort of association I have between wrestling and Christmas is that one clip of John Cena finding a present under the Christmas tree. Oh, yeah. He's looking at the audience. Under the ring. Uh, under, is it under the ring? Whoops. And he opens it. It's a chair. He looks so happy. He looks so genuinely pleased that there's a chair in this. Bro, every box. every December that gif just is – it's everywhere again. <laughs> That's the only association because actually I, I don't really have any memories of like watching wrestling during a specific holiday. You know what would be pretty dope? Wrestling in the snow. Oh man! Like if the ring was just full of snow, except snow is cold and horrible. So like I fake say snow, they've, right? We've seen that before. I would say like maybe ECW. I mean, they would brawl outside sometimes, and it may or may not be snowing. It's wild, dude. They would like slam people on fans' cars and stuff. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, oh my god, this, this yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it. it was Alberto Del Rio. He hit Santa with his car. Oh my goodness. It's like, hit Santa with his car. They're explaining what's gonna happen to Santa. We need you to get hit by Alberto Del Rio's very expensive car. All right. Um, you know what was really annoying for a while? Uh, backyarders were really into like just getting hit with cars a lot of car spots and stuff like yeah that. they were just like oh yeah hit me with the car I saw it online you know I kind of see their reasoning because I, it, I like what's something that's like shocking I guess and yeah something that's gonna get a reaction is a car right but I guess everyone has the same idea because everyone's got a car and they're like car hit me hit me with the car hit me with the hit me with the the minivan i saw a few clips of that happening where a wrestler drives their minivan into the arena hits someone on the side of the ring with their car and then jumps off their car to hit them with a move or something all right back to christmas oh, yeah, yeah back to christmas um i vaguely oh, i wish i did my research i'm sorry i slacked i even had the time to do it but i didn't think about it. i did i told you the topic um Oops. But, uh, oh, don't worry. I didn't prepare either. I came up with a topic as soon anyway, as you asked. I vaguely remember it. Do you watch Impact Wrestling? Today? No, no. Check no. it out. Uh, back in the day, I swear there was, I remember some sort of barbed wire Christmas tree. Like, oh, wow. match somewhere. <laughs> that sounds like something, yeah. <laughs> I wish I had more than that. But like, um, like a full Christmas tree or like like a medium one? It was, like how, yeah, it was just like a okay, full, okay. you know, fake Christmas tree wrapped in barbed wire. Oh I think gosh. it was Abyss. He was doing all the hardcore stuff. For it. That reminds me of something that has absolutely nothing to do with pro wrestling, but it's a really funny story. Um, so I've I've enjoyed lately not being the ha- dysfunctional household in the neighborhood sure. for for like about half a decade now. Um. So my neighbors across the street and to the left, they're always yelling at each other. And they and it, they just moved in. They just moved in like maybe a month earlier. It was December. I remember they were pulling into their driveway and they were arguing. They got out of the car and they were arguing. And, and then the woman, she like goes to the back of the car, opens up the trunk, pulls out a Christmas tree, like a fake Christmas tree, you know, and just chucks it at the dude. And... Oh. And and he yells, "Don't throw the f- Christmas tree at me!" And that is the that is the f- every time I think about it, it, it's just it's so funny. That's a wrestling match right there. They're about to get into it. I know, right? In the front yard. It wasn't even a ba- you can't even call it backyard wrestling. It's in the front yard. <laughs> Pretty much, dude. I was just like, and I think you know, even on like my saddest day, my saddest day, where just whatever. If I think of, don't throw the. F- Christmas tree at me! I just, I laugh. I think more holiday-themed uh, maybe wrestling matches here would be kind of fun, right? I, like, 
And I don't know. We don't. Uh, was uh, is this upcoming show kind of uh, holiday themed? Almost kind of. I mean, dude, I think it's I saw it's the poster. it's yeah. I I put a little bit on it. I put a yeah. I put like the little Christmas lightsy graphics that I did last year. Um, it's December tenth. That's a yeah. little early. That's a that's a little early to be like, whoa, Christmas show. I don't know about that. People, People start work. after October, man. Like after Halloween, November. <laughs> Thanksgiving hasn't even happened yet, and people have already got the Christmas trees. Well, it's Monday now. If somebody can come up with a gimmick, a a, a holiday themed gimmick match. All right, look. Whoever can assemble the fake Christmas tree first, and then hit dude, the other that's so easy. With it. You just get a bunch of gimmicks and put them in uh, gifts. There's a gimmick match right there. It's basically <laughs> no weapons match. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Don't. <laughs> hey pops, uh, doing this? can we do like a? Can we do like some kind of Christmas gimmick match this Saturday? Uh, what do you have in mind? Uh, oh my Michael God. had a pretty good it's idea. We just right have like now. a hardcore <laughs> match, but all the weapons are in presents first. <laughs> I did not expect this. <laughs> Wow, guys, my first time on the buckle bomb was so exciting. Oh, Pops is coming over. Hey, Pops. <laughs> I have y'all on the card with each other. Oh, really? Yes. Merry Christmas. So you listen here. Ah! Okay, so let's uh, let's do that. And if y'all can both put weapons and presents. Oh, God. Let's do it. That was my idea. This is so uncivilized. How brutish. I don't celebrate Christmas. I study over the break. That's funny. Cool. Then put a book in one and let you. Oh, that's there we go. Yeah. Hey. Be, be yeah, yeah, yeah. Textbook it offense. Could be, it could be just something funny. Yeah. Hit him with a book. Go on the ropes. He ducks one. Catch him with the back in the book. <laughs> <laughs> Close on with the book. Something like go. that. Splash or think of book. little things like that. You know, things funny. that aren't going to be that breakable that are going to hurt you guys. Sure, There's sure. no ornaments because that's, that's right. going to cut you. Um, so things like that. Maybe a fake plastic Christmas tree that you can find somewhere cool. and use it as a weapon and beat each other with a Christmas tree. Oh, man. That's think a, of more stuff. That's, that's a fun, fun idea. Okay. That's a fun idea. Do we play with it? Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Okay, I'm down with it. Let's do it. <laughs> and now we have something to talk about. Thank Christmas you. holiday. Thank you, Pops. <laughs> All right, Strike all right. The iron's hot. What an interesting All right, moment. so you guys better, you guys better, I'll go home and make a flyer for this match. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> can we call it like the super Christmas match? Uh, I'm trying to think. The hard Christmas match? Uh, the present die match. hard match. Present match. Present match. I kind of like the die hard match. Die hard's a Christmas movie, right? It is, it is. It's a Christmas movie. Uh, die hard Christmas movie. The Christmas match. Die hard. 12 days of Christmas. This is going to be really great when this doesn't happen, but it still ends up on the podcast. You guys better make this happen. Um, um, so, okay. Uh, I don't think we're going to hit any higher note than that. So and Pop's coming in and <laughs> yeah. throwing that shit out there. So it's time for everybody's favorite part of the Buckle Bomb podcast. A, B, P, always be plug in. Edmund, what you got? Oh, hello. Uh, I have an You are at the Chenlock on Instagram. That is absolutely correct. I am at the Chenlock on Instagram. Instagram is my main sort of social media. I don't really have anything else, uh, unfortunately. Uh, you can watch my matches, of course, on the AAPW YouTube channel. With the new and improved sound? Yes, the new and improved you sound. That? And dude, I d- I'm not going to name any names, but somebody was like, the sound is fun the way you know, when we were trying to like move stuff around during class, and people were like, the sound's fine. I have sent everybody a clip of last show and the show. I'm petty, man. I'm petty. No, no, you are. Because you sent me the clip and I didn't respond to it. And you said, doesn't it sound nice? And I was like, oh, no, no, no. I remember exactly what I sent you. I said, say it sounds better. (laughs) Say it. This doesn't help your case. It's true though, ain't it? No, to be fair, to it's be fair, true though, ain't it? To be fair, he admitted. He admitted he was better. <laughs> I give him credit. You him are being petty, it does my sound, friend. It does sound so much better. I, Unnecessary. When I, when I heard the slap on, like when I slapped, um, dude, that's not even a slap you did. That was a push. I know. And I'm still like, yo, um, I'm gonna mess with it some because, like, you can hear chops now, but it's like, sure, something about the chops aren't picking up. Like exactly right, so I'm gonna see what I can do about that. Like you hear them, but it's not like it's not exactly. It's what I'm trying to get is how how it sounds when you're there, you know. Absolutely. 
Well, anyway, the fuse is getting short. This has been a very... Di- what? Yeah, you can see official arrow yeah. underscore official arrow on Instagram. I'm sorry. When you're staring at the floor, I think you're uh, done. I was, I'm sorry. I was waiting to plug. <laughs> he, was, he was typing up. He was like, I'm ready to plug. I'm ready to plug. <laughs> Wait! And if you want to check me... Nah. Uh, okay, well, the fuse is running short. Uh, that's another buckle bomb in the can, and you all at home have been blown up.